it shouldn't be any surprise now that in getting the forest use of a certain function requires a lot of work because we're integrating the function and the function multiplied by cosine and multiplied by sine and as you can see the working really gets uh, very tedious however fortunately there's a way to really save us a lot of work and that is recognizing odd and even functions now if you take a standard course in um, algebra or maybe analysis you would maybe you know what odd and even functions are but let's just go through them briefly for the purpose of uh, furthering our study in foreign analysis or shall I say you are facilitating our study in for analysis okay so say f is defined a certain function f is defined from minus l to l a certain function f okay f is even if function of fx is equals to function of minus x for 0 to l that is what uh, what is we say if f is even. Certain functions which are even would be f uh, x squared, x4, and the cosine x function. Because we all know the certain identity that we've been so many times using. The cosine x can uh, the cosine function can absorb the minus sign. Uh, we can also make them cumulative. I mean, we can also add them up. So basically, this is also going to become an even function because if we put minus x inside. Uh, we can cancel out the minus sign. Okay, that's not even algebraically correct. But what I'm trying to say is this: this is an even function, no problem. Now, graphically um, showing it, what does that mean? Well, this means is that if we got a certain function defined from zero to l, let's just say the to get the function f, if f is even, we reflect the function from zero to l across the y-axis, which is over here like this. So this is minus L. Should be any, shouldn't be any surprise, because since it's a reflection, an x will give a certain value, and the minus x will give that same value. No surprise there. So this is if f is even. Now, what if f is odd? Function f is odd. f is odd if function fx is equal to minus function of x for 0 to L. Notice the difference that the minus is now outside. A common example would be x, x cubed, and the sine x function. Again, the identity that many of you have been using in high school is this function over here, minus sine x. Right, so this is what, this is what we say that if x is odd. Now, graphically showing it, what we do is that from 0 to L, we will reflect the graph from 0 to L about the origin which is basically rotating 180 degrees. Um, so if I were to reflect about origin, I would get something like that, right? Of, the, of this graph over here from zero to L. Why is this function odd? Well, simply because if we were to have the x and minus x, it shouldn't be no surprise that this would give a certain value of y. And if we were to find it for minus x, we would get the negative value. And it's going to be the same because I have reflected about the origin. So this is what it means when f is odd, these two properties. Okay, not much of a, of a use yet for analysis, but it's still going to come. Um, we need to also understand the multiplication of even and odd functions. If an even times an even function, even function multiplied by an even function, the resulting function will be even. If odd multiplied by an odd function, the resulting function will be even. And if odd multiplied by an even function, the resulting function will be odd. Um, simply take it as odd as negative or even as positive, you should see this relationship. So if I would have a function like x squared sine x, this would give me an odd function. Odd multiplied by even give me odd, odd function. Okay, now it's time to see how this is of use. We will go through some results in calculus, or actually it's just two results in calculus to see how it is of use. It's like this. Suppose that f is even, f is even, I will get a certain function like that. Okay, I won't define a function, I mean it could be x squared, x4, but let's just say f is equal to fx, and fx as you know is even, and this is from minus pi to pi. Here comes our um, limits, okay? And if I were to integrate from minus pi to pi of this function fx, due to the symmetry of the graph, I would just, I could equal that this to 2 of integrate minus uh, 0 to pi of the same function fx. I hope you can see that it's very easy because since we're reflecting about the y-axis, this area is going to be equal to this area over here. So if I want the whole area, I just integrate from 0 to pi multiplied by the 2. This is a fairly useful result, but the more useful result, or basically the one that we really like to have, is for odd functions. Okay? So if n is an odd function, and I would just draw it, say, like this, 
uh, is an odd function. If I want to integrate it from minus pi to pi uh, for an odd function, integrate minus pi to pi of the function f of x dx, I would get this area is a negative area, this area is a positive area, the two areas cancel out, I will get a zero. So, in for analysis, more often than not, we would want odd functions to appear, or at least we want an odd function multiplied by an even function to appear, because when we do the integration, and we know we are always integrating from minus pi to pi, or from minus l to l, we get zero. That is well said enough. So, let is, let's use these results for our ever so purposeful for analysis to see what we have. I'll go through it very quickly. So, for a series of f is going to be equal to a0 plus summation n equals to 1 of infinity a n cosine n x plus b n sine n n x. Okay, remember this is a forward series of f on minus pi to pi. Let's just stick with minus pi. Oh, okay, you know what? Let's just put l for now. We can, we can put in the, the arbitrary um, um, limit. So basically, this one changes okay, to n pi l divided by, sorry, no, no, n pi x, n pi x divided by l, n pi x divided by l plus b n sine n pi x divided by l. My mistake, and yeah, that is our Fourier series of f on minus l to l. So if I were to define the Fourier coefficients, it would be minus l to l, this one would be 1 divided by 2 l, integrate minus l to l of the function f of x dx, a n is going to be equals to 1 divided by i, integrate minus l to l of the function f of x cosine n pi x divided by l dx and b n is going to be equals to minus uh, 1 divided by l minus l to l function f of x sine n pi x divided by l dx. So these are the four coefficients of a certain Fourier series of um, f or on minus l to l. How is this useful? Well, we can recognize immediately whether f is even or odd. Because sometimes we are finding Fourier series of say f is equal to x, odd function. So what I can write is that if f is even, look carefully at the Fourier coefficients. If f is even, we can immediately eliminate this bn over here. Can you see that? Because f is even, this is even multiplied by odd. Remember, once it, uh, even multiplied by odd, integrating from minus l to l. Be very mindful of the limits, okay? Now, minus l to l, it can only be from minus, uh, minus l to l. If you're integrating from 2 to, let's just say, l, this does not work. Of course, if, if yeah, this does not work at all. Because it needs to be from the center, it needs to be from the center, and we're integrating from um, respect, um, similar width from the center, minus L to L, so this eliminates. F is even, this is going to be even, this is going to be even, even times even is still an even function, so if F is even, the four coefficients I can write as 1 divided by L, integrate from 0 to L of function Fx dx, and An is going to be equal to 2 divided by L, integrate from 0 to L, function F of X, cosine and pi X. So, what does this tell us? This tells us that if we are immediately integrating an even function, or sorry, if we immediately find the Fourier series of an even function, forget about bn. Do save the time, the trouble, because if you were to evaluate it, you will soon find out it's going to be equal to zero. And I did that a few times, don't be guilty of my mistake. So this is what if f is even. Now, if f is odd, things get even better. Why do I say that? If f is odd, integrating from zero from minus l to l for odd function equals to zero, odd times even is gonna be give us an odd function. So integrating from minus l to l of odd function is zero. So all we're left with is b n is equals to two minus l integrate zero to l. Odd times odd is even function f of x sine n pi x. And there we go. So these are our results for a certain Fourier series depending on whether f is even, in which case the Fourier coefficients get reduced to this thing over here, and if it's odd, the Fourier coefficients get reduced to this thing over here, and likewise, I will just simply complete by writing the Fourier series in this case is plus summation n equals to 1 to infinity of a n cosine n pi x l. 
please again, I stress again, remember the, the cosine function. You got the an function, which is integrating from f of x to cosine, but in the summation, you also got the cosine function. And for this case, if f is odd, we got um, the Fourier series is simply bn, or sorry, summation n equals to 1 to infinity of bn sine n pi x divided by m. And there we go. Recognizing that f is even, simplify, save yourself the trouble, just find a0 and an. If f is odd, save yourself the trouble and just find bn because of certain rules of calculus. Okay? And I stress again that we can use this property because we're integrating from minus l to l. Be very careful in the future, you need to find functions which are defined from let's just say 0 to 4, in which case may not be periodic and may not, um, you know, may not be styled the same properties as odd and even functions. But for now, just recognize if f is even, this f is odd, it's going to be here. Okay, thanks.